purpose of this video is for us to spend some time uh, learning some tips and tricks related to Excel. Uh, Excel is a, a really good tool for organizing data, making some graphs, uh, and doing some things with sets of data from experiments that we can't really always do by hand. And so for that reason, Excel is a very valuable resource, and we need to become a little bit proficient with it. And so it's something we'll be focusing on a little bit more this semester, and something that uh, you'll, you'll gain some experience using. And so maybe there's a wide variety of uh, levels of experience using Excel, but we need to make sure that everybody has at least some base knowledge of how to do some of the things that are necessary uh, in, a, in something like a physics course uh, using Excel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this data set here to run through how you might make a graph and analyze some data if you were doing an experiment. So the type of experiment that I'm going to do is um, one where I had an object and I am releasing it from various heights. So here I have the height measured in meters and I've released it from 20 centimeters, 40 centimeters, 60 centimeters, all the way up to 2 meters. And then I've measured the velocity of that object right before it hits the ground. And so I have the velocities recorded there. If I was using a meter stick to measure those heights, I'm probably able to measure those heights at least to the nearest centimeter. And so for that reason, maybe it makes sense to make sure that all of these data values are, are given to the nearest hundredth at least. But right now you see it's just 0 0.21. So maybe I was dropping the object from regular heights, like exactly 20 centimeters, exactly 40 centimeters. Uh, and so I know those values to better than the one digit that's shown. And so the way that I can get all of the numbers there to have the same number of decimal places and the correct number of decimal places, which would show the correct level of precision that I had in measuring those values, would be to go up to this place here where these uh, little decimals are with the arrows and increase the decimal until I get to the point where all the values have the same number of decimal places to the nearest hundredth. So that's to the nearest centimeter. And maybe I uh, was able to measure the speeds all to the nearest hundredth of a meter per second and so they all need to have two decimal places. So I go up to that same spot after highlighting them and click that. And uh, it went one digit too far and so I'm going to backpedal by clicking the decrease decimal button which is right next to that. And so now we're all set. The data table looks nice and neat. If I want to make an initial graph to try and understand the relationship between these two variables, I can go up to Insert, the Insert tab, and I'll go over to Charts, and there's a spot here where there are scatter plots. If you click there, there are several different options. The one we want is the one where the data points are not connected to one another. So we click that, it just says Scatter, and you get this empty region where you can make a graph. If I right-click that graph, and select select data on the left hand side it says legend entries series and what I can do here is I can add a series which is essentially a data set and so I'm going to go ahead and click add the first thing that's in this data box here uh, where you could input some information just says series name and we don't need to name this anything uh, it would just show up where that chart title is up there but we don't need a title for these graphs we just need to make sure that we select the correct values for X and Y so it says series X values I'm gonna click this little arrow on the right when I click that I'm gonna move to my data set and I'm gonna highlight everything that I want to plot on the X axis so for now let that be the heights and then I click this arrow to go back and now I need to uh, select what I want to plot on the y-axis, so I click the arrow, I highlight all the values that I want to plot on the y-axis, click the arrow again, and you could see immediately that the data gets populated into the graph. I can click OK and OK to get out of those, those uh, boxes, and then I'm back to my graph. The data is there. Uh, I can click on this chart title and press delete to get rid of that. We don't need the title. And the next thing I could do, just to make sure that I know what I'm looking at when I see this graph, would be to add some labels to the axes so that way I have uh, um, a good way of, of remembering what was plotted on each axis. So I'm going to go up to the plus and I'm going to hit plus and select axis titles. And that automatically gives me some generic little boxes for the axis titles. If you remember on the y axis what I plotted were the speeds V which were measured in meters per second so I'm using this box to put the variable and then also the unit and then on the x-axis 
what I plotted uh, were the heights, h, which were measured in meters. And so initially, uh, you could look at this graph and say, well, it looks kind of linear, but not quite linear. It looks like it curves a little bit. And so for that reason, maybe there's a nonlinear relationship between V and H. And so somebody who already knows about conservation of energy, what they would say is they could use a conservation of energy equation to explain that relationship that they're seeing in the graph. They would say, well, for a dropped object, it starts off with some initial gravitational potential energy. And that initial gravitational potential energy is being converted into kinetic energy, one-half mv squared. And so the relationship between the two variables that I'm plotting here, h and v, could be seen by looking at this equation. So if I do a little bit of manipulation, then I could see the relationship just between v and h. First, I'll see that the uh, masses cancel, and then I have to multiply both sides by 2 and then maybe take the square root. One way to write this relationship is the following. V equals the square root of 2GH. So if you solve that equation for the final speed that the object has when it reaches the ground, it's equal to the square root of 2 times G times the initial height that the object had. Looking back at this, um, Maybe this looks to you already a bit like a square root type of function. And so one way that we can verify that this was a square root function is instead of plotting v versus h, I could plot v versus the square root of h. This is a linearization problem, right? We know that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. Right, y equals mx plus b. And so if I match that up with the form of equation that's above, that means that if I am careful about what I plot on each axis, if I plot v versus the square root of h, where v is on the y-axis, the square root of h is on the x-axis, then what the slope will be of that graph, it will be a straight line, and the slope of that straight line will be whatever's left in the equation, which in this case is the square root of 2g. Notice there's no plus b here. There's no plus 0. It's just this. So the intercept should be 0. The slope of this uh, line should be the square root of 2g, so long as I plot v on the y-axis and the square root of h on the x-axis. So I'm going to go back to my uh, graph here. And what I want to do is I want to make a new graph. I'm going to insert, chart, scatter plot. I'm going to right click the graph again. I'm going to hit select data. I'm going to add a series. For the x values, I want to select the velocities. Excuse me, I want to select the heights, but I need the square root of the heights. But I don't have a column that has that yet. So actually, let's back up and let's press cancel and cancel. What I really need is I need a column in my spreadsheet, which is the square root of the height, because that's the thing that I need to plot. So the way that I'm going to abbreviate that is SQRT, and then I'm going to put H in parentheses. And this is where we can kind of harness the power of the spreadsheet and save ourselves a little bit of time. The way that I can calculate the square root of the height in a particular cell is I can press equals. The abbreviation for square root is SQRT. I can type open parentheses, then click on the cell that I want to take the square root of, and then close the parentheses. So what this is saying is equals means this cell is going to be equal to a value, and that value is the square root of the cell that I clicked on the left, A2, which is the initial height. If I press enter, it tells me what the square root of that height is. And instead of having to do that for every cell, I could reach to the bottom right-hand corner of this box, and I can pull this all the way down. And I get the square root of all the numbers that were the initial heights. So I don't have to do that myself. I can go back up and adjust the decimal places to only show two decimal places, because the precision to which I measured those things didn't change just because I took the square root. 
So now I've got the two things that I want. I want to plot these two columns. So now I can go back to my graph. I'll right click that graph, select data, add a series. On the x axis, I'd like to plot the square root of h. Notice how I'm not selecting the uh, title, the heading of that column when I select those data points. And then for the y values, I, I want to still plot the velocities. And so we're expecting if I plot v versus the square root of h, I get a straight line. And there it is. It looks much more straight than before. We'll get rid of the chart title. The next thing I can do is I can really analyze uh, this the equation that would describe the best fit line that runs through those data points. And the way that I can do that is I can select the data points. After left clicking on them, I can right click and select add a trend line. And I'm going to select a couple options here. First, we want to make sure that we're set on linear. That will be the default option because I'm fitting a function right now with a form of an equation that's linear. And so we want to make sure that we select linear. And then down here, I want to say uh, display equation on chart. And I want to set intercept to zero. And it's already set at zero. The reason why I'm clicking the set intercept button is because if I look at my equation, if I look at my equation, there is no intercept. I know that the uh, intercept should be zero. So I'm telling Excel, make sure the intercept is zero when you make your best fit line. This display equation on chart, what that gives me is the equation of my line. So that's telling me that y equals 4.4157x. If I go back to my equation, uh, the slope of that line is supposed to be the square root of 2 times g. So what is that? I'm going to press equals the square root of, so I open the parentheses, 2 times g. And Excel doesn't know what g is, so you have to tell it. 9.8, so I'm using the asterisk for the multiplication symbol. 2 times 9.8 under the square root, and then I close the parentheses. And that value is 4.42719. So I'm going to reduce that to the nearest hundredth place. And this is my expected slope. And what I get from my graph up above is my actual slope. And what that's telling me is y equals 4.4157x. So it's telling me that the slope of that line is about 4.42. So what this shows is, uh, based off of my, my theory here, my conservation of energy equation, the slope of that line should be the square root of 2g, which is 4.43. The actual slope of my line is 4.42. So you might expect that you know if your uncertainty in the heights are about a millimeter or two, if your uncertainties in the velocities are about you know 0.1 meter per second or something like that, and there's some uncertainty here, and that will account for this differences for the differences that we have here in the expected slope and the actual slope. But they're actually very close to one another. Even when you just look at the line, it's basically a perfect fit, right? The line is a, a very good measure of uh, a very good representation of what's going on with the data set. And so this is, you know, there's a lot of things here that we wouldn't been able, we would not have been able to do as well if we were doing this uh, by hand. And so, you know, here are some some excellent ways that we could use Excel. From here, uh, we could print this out, cut this out, trim out the data table in a couple of graphs. Uh, we could show the square root function in the one graph, the linear function in the other graph, explain what we plotted on each axis, and then uh, that would be a, you know, a great addition to the lab notebook as opposed to having to make them all by hand. Before we do any of that, it would probably be a good idea to add axis titles to this graph. And then we have to be pretty careful because when we try to print things on Excel, what happens is uh, you know, the, the default settings are usually not very good. And so it'll typically trim up the graphs and turn things into multiple pages. And so we have to be careful about how we arrange those things. I might want to bring this graph down here. And I might want to move uh, the data that I have there over here somewhere. So that way, when I go up to File Print, um, it's all showing up mostly on one page. You could see that I probably should still make the graphs a little bit smaller. 
There's a ton more that I could do. I could play with how these numbers are represented on the axes of the graphs, and I could trim the graph to make it fit my data set a little bit better. I can play with the colors of these dots and do all sorts of things. And there's a number of things that we didn't really mess with yet that might be very useful. But for us, the basic, basic skills that I want to make sure that you have is um, a little bit of knowledge of how to input the equations into the cells, which means we need to type in equal sign first, and then type in the square root or you know the multiplication signs that convey what we want to happen inside of that cell. I want to make sure that we know how to put the data in into a nice, neat little table. And I wanted to make sure that we know how to make a graph. And then uh, once you have that graph, you know, can you add a best fit line and use the little uh, equation that's displayed to compare the expected slope to the actual slope if you know what the theoretical equation is supposed to be and if you know what that theoretical slope is supposed to be because that's one way of confirming whether or not you've, you've done a good job, whether or not your, uh, your results from the experiment are in agreement, are in agreement with what you uh, want them to be or what you expect them to be. Uh, for now, I think that's that's good enough. Uh, we'll be getting some practice soon, but and then maybe we'll we'll learn even some more things that might allow us to do some more advanced uh, stuff here a little bit later on.